Good morning, everybody. Orange Jay here with another War of the Visions video. I almost messed that up and said something else. I don't know what else I was going to say, but almost something else. Anyway, it is Friday night, which means Friday night fights. This week's theme is colors. So it's very like kindergarten based theme. You pick units based on what color of clothes they're wearing. You group them and you throw them at the other unit. Here you see the finals of the losers bracket where we have Kioma versus Cuckington. Kioma obviously rocking the red people. Cuckington obviously rocking the blue people. Two primary colors facing off in Friday Night Fights. Now I'm going to tell you that Fryevia on Cuckington's team has been really, really scary. So, you can see the red clothes right here, right? From Mont, Rain, and Elsie. We put Elsie into red. Who knows? Really, her clothes color is skin, but we didn't make a skin color category, so that is what it is. Okay, Gilgamesh gonna cast Uldoa's TMR. Very spread out here. Agrius is really far away from this fight, but you can see the blue theme coming out from Cuckington. Agrius, Fryavia, Gilgamesh. Okay, Rain moving forward. Here's Fryavia, gonna get to cast some buffs this turn. Attract Barrier online. Got her hate moving forward. It's Mon's turn. He's not in range, so he's going to proclaim himself the tank and start walking towards Fryevia. Here we go. Protect online from Elsrael. That will be really nice against Gilgamesh, but that's really it. Anyway, Kotetsu comes out. Not a lot of damage on rain. I'm telling you guys, though, Fryevia is the real carry of this blue team. It is Rain's turn. He's looking for the limit break on Gilgamesh. Now, Rain has the elemental advantage here, so it's going to do pretty good damage. That was like 5,500, almost kills Gilgamesh. Fryevia's up. She has hate, and it's Fryevia, so she's going to heal Gilgamesh. That's pretty OP. Mott looking for the claws, does lower her slash resist, and does a lot of damage. It is Elsie's turn. She's going to bring out the waterbed. Dreamy Typhoon comes out targeting Gilgamesh. He goes way up in the air, or she does. I don't know. They're both laying in the same waterbed. I would, too. It's Gilgamesh's turn. 35 AP. He's going to go Kotetsu plus onto two. Nice damage. Lowers that slash resist. That's pretty useful. Agrius is up. Taunting Blade. Now, that's big because everybody's in range of Fryavia and Agrius instead of Gilgamesh. They will leave Gilgamesh alone now, and that's going to be really important. Fryavia channeling a spell. Remember the thing with Fry... Oh my god, I actually forgot. The absolutely overpowered AoE that is King Mott finds the kill. This is just over. All of a sudden, King Mott said, you know what? Shut up, Orange. I'm the king of this game. I'm ending this fight. GG. Kyoma going on to the grand finals. Let's go there next. All right, so now for the finals, we have Seabass who ran the winner's bracket. He's got to be beaten twice by Kiyoma here to lose. Meanwhile, Kiyoma looking for those two wins to become the grand champion and get to face off against the Church of Eileen squad in the like God tier ultimate super finals. We'll see. It looks like both players are running red squads. So red has been determined to be the most primary of the three primary colors in War of the Visions. And if you didn't know, the three primary colors are red, yellow, and blue. Nobody played yellow today. So uh, I think that speaks volumes for something. I don't know what that something is. Anyway, let's load into the fight. All right, here we go. It is, oh yes, we've seen this squad before. It is Rain, King Mont, and Orin versus Rain, King Mont, and Summer Elsorel. Note that Summer Elsorel has a massive elemental advantage over King and Rain Mont. So, bringing those massive assets to the fight is Summer Elsie. Um, King Mont gets his hate online. Rain, if he uses his attra- Okay, he goes Blazing Physique. That's not going to help him against Elsie. The Magic Shield would have been a big deal, though. Here's Astral Guard for Kiyoma's Rain, walking forward. Here we go, it's King Mont's turn. He's looking for Claws. He finds it. Slash attack resistance down. Now, what can Elsie do? She's going to bust out the waterbed. Dreamy Typhoon coming out. Big time water damage. Let's see what this does to King Mott. 3,300. Not a ton, but it does lower his AP, which could be big. Fangs, ooh, the disable lands on the rain. And here comes Orin. He's going to find the fire tornado onto all three people right here. This could be huge. We've seen the water tornado. The fire tornado, it might have been more impactful than the water tornado. I don't know. We'll see. Amethyst Blaze comes out. Elsorel is dead, but Courage procs. Uh, Rain walks forward. He's disabled. It's Mont's turn. Mont needs to find some big-time damage right here. Instead, he just lowers everybody's slash resist. 
However, it does kill the Orin. And with Mont from Seabass being out of AP, it's going to give Summer Elsie another turn. Geo Assimilation, big damage with a heal. That elemental advantage coming in large. Okay, she's slowed now. Actually, both people for Kioma are slowed. Claws of the Young King comes out. Rain is dead. It's a 1v2. Seabass is Mont. Stun Blade, no stun. And this Mont stands alone. Okay, Elsie just going to say, hey, Mont. Read a book, bro. He goes down. Kioma picks up the win, but he will have to beat Seabass twice to become the champion from the loser's bracket. So let's see what happens. Okay, here we go. The final match of the grand finals right here. It's Kioma versus Seabass. It's, they're just running it back. There's no team comp changes, but that's a big change right off the top. The initial placement plays a huge role, and Seabass finds the critical disable on Kioma's Mont. And now things are looking up for Seabass. Can the winner's bracket champion defend the winner's bracket against the loser's bracket challenger? We shall see. Kioma's reign buffs some hate. His Mott runs forward and just says, I'm here. Please kill me. Seabass's Mott says, I'm just going to get some AP, dude. That's all I need. He slaps him once. Rain going to... Oh, Rain? Or, or not Rain. Orin going to waste his limit break on just finishing off the Mott. Actually, doesn't even kill him. Oh, my God. That Mott is a tanky boy. Meanwhile, Devitalizing Glint comes out. Big damage. Rain. He says, you know what? Forget the disabled Mott. I'm looking for the double slow. It was a good thought, but the slows don't land. Kioma's Rain tries the slows. Does he land any? No. 0 for 4 on landing a slow, but that Mott's still disabled. It's Orin's turn. He's got all the AP he wants. Dragon Bang comes out. Big time damage. Summer Elsorel is has 1 HP. She's got 1 HP. Now, Stun Blade comes out onto the rain. No status effects land. The 1 HP Elsorel. With the comeback plays? Maybe. Soul Prominence onto the rain. Rain's dead. What's Elsorel casting right here? What is this? It's Geo Assimilation. Kills the Orin. Heals her up a little bit. Ma is still disabled. Somehow he's still alive. That's the crazy thing. There's a slap from Mont, Elsorel's turn. She says, hey, Mont, you want to read a book? Look at this book. I went to the library earlier. I got my library card. Have a read. Big damage comes out. Mont goes down. Now, Rain's turn. Power break onto Mont. Mont's dead. It is Rain versus Summer Elsorel. Rain, very good versus magic, but Summer Elsie has the element advantage. Devitalizing Glint comes out. 3,900 damage. Rain hangs in there, but only 4 AP. He has to auto attack. It's Elsie's turn. Read a book, Rain. You're dead. Kioma picks up the win. The loser's bracket winner comes up to the winner's bracket and picks up the big time win. GG. All right. Time to face off against the church team. Okay. Kioma gets the honor of going into the church to fight the church team. I have my auto fight turned off. He doesn't know I'm going to cheat. I'm going to manual the whole thing. No, you know what? We're in a church. I'm not going to cheat in manual because it's church. Don't cheat in church. I'm going to hit auto. We're going to let it play out. There's Calamity Strong Guard from Mashari. The church sister buffs everybody's magic. We're basically immune to all status effects. And then Mashari does the very Mashari thing of just not moving. She's one of the best units in the game at deciding to take no action. Now, this could be real bad news for uh, Eileen. Eileen not particularly good against magic attacks, and neither is Luel. They both almost die. But how's the counterattack look? How about a gift of knowledge? Go to a library, Elsorel. You've got a book, Luel's got a book, and you're hurting. Now, can Eileen finish off the Elsie? Nope, she's just going to cast a buff and walk forward to die. That's okay. Rain going to go ahead and oblige them both with the death. And it's it's it happens a lot where it's Mashari versus uh, three. This seems to be a regular thing. Mashari goes ahead. She banishes Luel out of the church. So good start. Claus comes out. 3,400 damage on Mashari. She's in trouble. Here's Rain with the LB. I think this might be GG for Mashari. Yeah, that's like 8,000 damage. Mashari's dead. And Kioma, the red team, proves their colors and ascends into the godhood of champions of the church. GG to everybody who played today. Thank you guys for showing up. Thank you, Twitch, for being here. Uh, thank you, everybody, for watching the video. If you want to participate in Friday Night Fights, there is a link to my Discord in the description. Join the Discord. We have a different rule set every week. We play every Friday at 5.30 p.m. Central Standard Time. Next week, we might play either late or have to push it off. Uh, Baby J's, you know... 
got things he's got to be watched or something. I don't know. You can't leave babies by themselves. It's really weird. Anyway, that's the video for this week, guys. Thank you for watching, and I will catch you next time. Peace.